Hi, I'm Roman. Welcome to After Hours Restorations. And here I specialize in restoring uh, classic Mopars ranging from 1965 to 1971. I've been restoring Mopars professionally for 10 years now, starting in 2005. I've built several cars, um, 1970 Hemi Challenger, 66 Hemi Charger, 70 Challenger Convertible, a 69 Roadrunner Convertible, and several other Mopars. Today we are uh, working on a 383 engine, which we built for a 66 Charger, which we're doing a museum quality restoration on. Our charger that we uh, were given to restore came with no engine and no transmission. So we put a lot of effort into finding a date-coded engine for this car, meaning that the engine was casted a couple months prior to the car being assembled or built on assembly line. So our charger we're restoring was built in January 5th of 1966. So we had to uh, set out to find a block that was casted in like September of 65, October or November of 65. This block here was casted in September 27th of 1965. So there's, there's two important numbers on a block. The, the casting number, which for this specific one is September 27th, 1965, that's the date the engine was casted at the foundry. The second number is gonna be the date it was machined on assembly line. A lot of times these blocks sat on pallets in rooms and they got buried uh, with new castings. Um, so that's why there's two different dates you need to look at uh, when you're trying to find a date coded block for your car. This certain block has numbers right behind the distributor which read B383. The 383 means it's a 383 cubic inch and the B stands for it is a 1966 model year. So even though the casting number on a block is a 65, it means that it was machined as a 60, for a 66 model car because it has a B in front of the 383. If it was an A in front of the 383, it would mean it was assembled for a 65 model car. And if it was a C, in front of the 383 would mean it was uh, machined and assembled for a 67 model car. In addition to missing the engine, this car was also missing the transmission. So we had to set out to locate a proper number, part number transmission. The part number on the transmission is located right above the pan rail on the driver's side. Each car line had a different part number transmission. It could be a 66 Charger and a 66 Fury, and they both could have 383s in it. Um, the 66 Charger is more of a performance version car versus the Fury, so the transmissions are gonna be different part numbers. Each year has their own specific part numbers, and this 66 Charger calls for a ending part number in 334, and that's what we located for this car. In 1966, Chrysler did not stamp the sequence numbers on an engine block. So basically, it's hard to say that a car is a matching numbers car. Um, the best you could say, it's a date-coded car, unless you have paperwork proving that it's a one-family owner car or a car with extreme documentation. Not only did we locate the correct casting number block for this car, but when we went through the rebuilding process, the machining process with the block, there's a procedure called decking the block. So basically, um, they machine the surface between the head and the cylinder block. It's, it's the top of the block, which the head sits on. And the numbers underneath the distributor are stamped on a pad, which is actually part of the deck. So if they would have um, went across the whole deck with the cutting wheel, they would have wiped the B383 right off of that pad and it wouldn't be visible anymore. So we made sure that the machine shop stopped right before it reached those numbers. So once the car is completely built, those numbers will always be there. We decided to start this engine up on a test stand versus starting it up in the car. Uh, for a couple reasons. For one, if we had an issue, it would be easy to fix and we wouldn't have to worry about scratching a freshly painted car. Second, we have plenty of access to get into tight areas if we have to. That's another reason you see this engine is not painted. Because if something went wrong and we had to take it apart, we would have to 
scratch up the bolts and scratch up all the other parts of the engine while we were fixing it. So as you'll see in the video, when we started the engine, we immediately took it to approximately 2,000 RPM. It's very important to do that because there's a camshaft in the middle of the motor and it has lobes on it. Here's the camshaft, old camshaft I have, and you can see the lobes, the high points. So basically when you're running it at 2000 RPM on initial break-in, you're making sure that you oil the camshaft properly. And what does that is the crankshaft spinning at a high RPM splashes oil up onto the camshaft. And the camshaft needs to uh, go through a 20 minute break-in period. So this is why we ran it at 2000 RPM for about 20 minutes before we brought it down at an idle. If you start a fresh engine and you just let it idle, you're at risk of rounding off the lobes on a camshaft. As you see, we have the transmission attached to the engine. We chose to run a transmission with the engine on this test stand because it gives us the opportunity to fill the transmission up with fluid and make sure we don't have any leaks. Sometimes it's a common issue to have problems with the transmission pump seals leaking or the torque converter hub seals leaking. We can't put a load on a transmission, but we can leave it in neutral, which will circulate the fluid by uh, activating the, the transmission pump. So the next step is, is to separate the engine from the trans, get this engine off this test stand, and put the correct valve covers on it, the, fr the correct front accessories on it, the alternator, uh, the air conditioning compressor, the power steering pump, put the correct carburetor on it, and before we do all that, we'll spray it turquoise, uh, the proper color that it should be. So our charger will be coming back from the body shop, painted, ready for assembly in a couple weeks. And we're going to continue shooting videos of the assembly process. Please make sure to follow along. If you're interested in seeing any pictures of my prior restorations, please visit my website, www.afterhoursrestorations.com. Thank you.